lays his head in my lap and waits for any affirmation that I'll give him, tail stalled between his legs and slug tongue tucked back behind his teeth, swearing some vow with the silvery crown of his gaze, a deferential safety. This is all he can give me. After years of going to routine checkups, buying overpriced kibble, finding dismembered shoe toys strewn across the house, this is the best he can do to return the favor and demonstrate the breadth of his gratitude. Even without words, he's never at a loss. Those loving eyes speak for him. A wrinkle of light steals across the silken black, angular and simple like a promise that rises and spoons over into an ever silent persuasion. There's just no language for that. Like all the times I've looked someone in the eyes and tried to find the right words to tell them I love you, words to equal the real feeling, there was never a way to say it. I tried to make good by giving more than I was meant to give, wanting to suffice where I could and stiffen the bones of every failure where I couldn't. To almost no avail, I'd sacrifice anything to be someone worth loving. Vacant lung, vacant lung, vacant lung or winter of longing in a place where, any, where, any, where wind carries any desire for so long that it becomes song-like, a sweep of hard-won love traveling the distance between a still permanent wake. There was never a way to say it. Each breath arrested resonance too dark to spit back, too haunted to hollow out, but I wanted to make this love count for something, settling this impossible debt between myself in the deep unknowing, an offering made to some god of redemption, but it never felt enough. And now, when I walk toward that threshold, that forbidden country of loss, something in me speaks back, says, return is always in the air somewhere. In a dream, the first girl I ever loved softens her voice into an arrowhead splitting down light from true eternity, startling awake the part of me I had sworn to secrecy, misremembered, and lapis sky makes its own entryway for memory, seething with the weight of things I couldn't carry alone. And now as she speaks, the world goes almost dark, a brief reconciling to life forgotten. And she says, we are all ages away from what we long for. But you keep walking. The sun rises, and I am a silhouette of you, here now, but gone forever. Whatever I whisper back gets caught in terrible self-translation. Phonics gets stuck to tree bark like evening dew and return to me in new form. Everything I have ever given up to be loved, lovable, loving, it is all waiting for me even in these strange days of unmaking, even reshaped. This past is still past. So I've got to make it work, I tell anyone who will listen. A pledge with the rusted hook of time lodged deep inside. Yes, I will make it work with whatever I have left to give after all these years. Nothing more or less tainted and beautiful as could be, spun with the spare loneliness that mere words can never amplify. You see, I want to love in the way that a new-to-the-world dog waits. In the hour after dusk, I make myself small enough to look up and by no design of my own catch whatever light falls through the fault and constellates there, fear escaping like a bed of rubies blooming between unfamiliar floorboards. You see that sunset? At least some of it is made for wanting. So in my perfect stillness, I stay under it. I stay under the face of my love. And that is where my trust goes. Like the tender creature I was always meant to be. That is the moment I'm finally willing to lay myself down in front of anyone I have ever loved and say, this is all I have hoping that by some miracle, by some miracle,